I'm interested, Rebecca, on in what you think about the Alphabet case in particular. We've had some really phenomenal, in terms of kind of shocking pieces of revelations coming from none other than CEOs of rival companies like Satya Nadella. That's right. So the big news out of the Google antitrust trial this week is the testimony of Satya Nadella. Um, he testified about what it was like to compete with Google and painted a very bleak picture. Um, in so doing, sort of seemed to paint a little bit of a bleak picture of his own company's ability to compete. So he must have been feeling like he was walking a fine line there. But his point was that, you know, we could we could approach Apple with the same billions and billions of dollars and they were never going to take it. They were always going to go with Google. And it's basically impossible to compete with Google on search. But therefore, does that play into Google's hand and at least its argument? Well, Apple's argument has always been Google's a better product. It's not that they're just too big. It's that they're too that much better. That's right. But the rest of the testimony um, over the past few weeks, a lot of it has focused on this idea of scale and how scale is essential to build that uh, better search product. So part of why Bing was willing to pay as much as it was to be the default on Apple was that they wanted to get the scale. It was worth it, worth it to them to lose some money on that deal in the short term if they could have the user data to build a product that could really compete with Google. And so the question in this case, one way of framing it is, you know, is Google better because it's big or is Google big because it's better? Google wants you to think the latter. They want you to think that they won and they're big because they have a better product. And I think the government is trying to tell a little bit of a different story saying you kind of have to be big to be good. You ought to let other companies have a shot at becoming big. And I suppose this does push us forward to a an era in which perhaps Alphabet's Google is under some competitive threat because of generative AI, because we're starting to see well, ChatGPT, OpenAI's relationship with Microsoft maybe bear through, maybe bring people across to a different kind of search product. But more broadly, what did you make, for example, of the reporting around the AI Act, the worries that the smaller companies might not be able to compete with the big companies? How much of this just is a never-ending conversation when it comes to size and power? So, absolutely. Any kind of regulation... Um, well, unfortunately, most regulation, we won't say any regulation, but a lot of regulation does benefit big companies in the sense that compliance is expensive. It's expensive to comply with the laws, and sometimes that's something a small company can't do. It's another reason why being big is important and why we need to allow other companies besides behemoths like, like Google, at least in the search space, to get that kind of size and scale. What's a little funny about this, of course, is Microsoft is not a small company by, yeah. by any measure, but it is in terms of market share for search. Yeah, you've had the smaller players like DuckDuckGo, for example, giving evidence to the CEO there as well. And interesting revelations as to who might have bought who at what point. Rebecca, moving on to what's also been front and center for us has been the FTC's analyzation of Amazon in the marketplace. What's also interesting is the CMA over in the UK also looking into, well, the interpretation of cloud and how Ofcom has felt that perhaps there's not much competition in that space either. Can you just paint a picture of how regulation is evolving here, UK, EU? Is everyone fighting the same fight here? Um, everyone is fighting the same fight in the sense that everyone's recognizing the market power of these platforms, the way that technology is changing fast and therefore the competitive conditions are are changing fast and wanting to be adaptive in their regulation to foster competition in all these new uh, areas. The suit against Amazon is uh, represents the third major strike uh, by the government against a major American platform monopoly. And I guess the last one left is Apple. Indeed. And I think to that point, when you're drilling in on the likes of Amazon and Amazon also getting into other people's competitive space, of course, it's becoming an advertiser in and of itself and being able to draw that away from perhaps some of the social media giants out there. How do you see ultimately these sorts of inquisitions going? Do you think in any way that the FTC will win out and bear fruit or will they ultimately not even need to win this case to change the direction of the way we think about monopolies and, and power and regulation? Both things are possibly true. So first of all, it's too early to say that the FTC and the DOJ's attempt to brain in big tech has been unsuccessful. They've had some disappointing losses in court, but they've also had some small wins. And it's also only been a couple of years since they've been trying to do this. We look back at the 70s when, in retrospect, antitrust turned on a dime. 
But actually, it really took many years for that to crystallize. And so I do think it's too early to say. Um, and I think as far as the, the long run prospects for these, these imperatives, I think that it depends on the political will. Law is not uh, impervious to what the people want. And I think people are starting to be more skeptical of market power by major tech monopolies. They certainly are. And in that respect, we were all, of course, aware that the FTC investigation of Amazon is going to take, well, at least 18 months even to start. Do you think the timelines here are in any way in, our, in an investor's mindset, something that they should be thinking about? Well, you sort of said it before when you said you have to win to change to change the situation. And, and I think that the delay is kind of a part of that explanation. So yes, it may not be true that you file a suit and then you know six months later there's a resolution and you have an outcome. In fact, it might take so long that the competitive conditions change and the thing that you were suing about isn't really true anymore because the market's moved on. That was true about the Microsoft case. It took too long to really allow Netscape to survive. 